And welcome to a new episode of PR360, and I'm your host, Brett Dice. If you please subscribe to PR360 on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Leave a review. It really does help with the rankings and let us know how we are doing. But this week, I have John Cass with me, and he is he's the AI guy with content as well. So it's a really good thing to actually have him on because this is going to be a big thing for PR and marketing moving forward. So... He has done a ton of things in that space. We are so excited to actually have him talk about it, but I'm going to give him a little bit more option to give you a little bit more of his summary. But this week is going to be all about AI and content. So welcome to the show, John. Oh, thanks so much, Brett. Great to be here. And the first question I ask all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? Well, um, I am English, so I drink tea, but I'm also half American, so uh, I love coffee as uh, uh, as well. And uh, actually, over the holidays, I just got a new uh, coffee machine where I'm uh, making pots of uh, coffee and then also some of those K-cup things as well. So um, uh, it's uh, both here. Gotcha. Yeah, I get it too. I mean, sometimes we those K cups are just appealing because they're easy to actually make. They are. They are very much so. You can have whatever you want. Yeah, and so I gave a brief introduction to you, but can you summarize your expertise to our listeners? Yes, certainly. So um, I'm a marketer, and uh, I mainly work with uh, with clients on uh, content strategy and uh, SEO, uh, et cetera. But actually I've, I've worked a lot in the PR space uh, being an early blogger. I actually uh, worked on the global PR blogging uh, week in 2004 and 2005 and met many of the PR folks uh, in, in uh, tech PR land during that time. And I also ended up writing a, uh, a book about corporate blogging. Um, in the last year though, uh, I've really become interested in, in how um, AI is impacting content generation, and I uh, formed a AI content generation analyst firm with my colleague uh, Scott Sweeney, and we're working on research and consulting uh, to uh, uh, corporate teams and, and also agencies. Gotcha, and that's what we're going to talk about. So moving into just AI in general, it's slowly becoming more and more important in PR and marketing as considered like with strategy and content. So what's what's new coming from AI this year? Well, um, I think in 22, 2022, it's going to be the year where you're really going to see uh, people wake up and, and see that the technology has come ahead. In the last two years, especially uh, with um, OpenAI, a company that uh, basically launched the GPT-3 uh, technology, which is a, a language model uh, that allows uh, AI content generation companies uh, to uh, to uh, work with that uh, language model and develop uh, content generation. Um, uh, lots and lots of companies have popped up in the last two years. And so um, they're starting to uh, develop solutions for different industries like PR, you know, in how you uh, you pit, use uh, AI content generation for, for, for developing content for pitching, for doing research, those sorts of things. And um, I think what's critical in all this, though, is to realize while the technologies come ahead, you still need humans involved in doing the editing and you still need them involved in that process. But the big aspect of it is um, that um, uh, companies can use these tools to you know, get better results. Gotcha. And then, I mean, you said like a new like language. Is that kind of like, for those that don't really know what the tech speak is, is that more like JavaScript as a language, that type of thing? Or is it something a little bit different? It's a language model, essentially. So what is happening is that uh, companies like OpenAI have gone out uh, and developed uh, a model or a database of, uh, uh, of, uh, of text that's out there and then develop models uh, so that uh, other technology companies, AI content generation companies, can um, uh, intersect with, those, uh, with, with that um, uh, language model and uh, pull 
the database of, uh, of text, the machine language, uh, into their own uh, software and technology so that they can develop AI content writing software. So that you as a user, as a PR um, uh, professional, uh, can then use those tools to research um, uh, uh, different topics that you're looking for. You can build uh, blogging, uh, sorry, you can build briefing, uh, uh, briefs uh, or for an article, um, or you can also generate uh, AI content generation content based upon the keywords and the briefs that you put together. Gotcha. And then talking about PR and PR pros, how can they effectively use AI for analyzing and generating content in 2022? Because content is getting a little bit more difficult and a little bit more, I would say, time consuming. Well, that's a very good po point, uh, Brett. I, I think the issue there is that the there are more requirements for higher levels of, of quality. You know, if you want to get a ranking on on Google, Google is looking at your qual uh, content and they're trying to make sure that you've got, yes, the keywords, but also you're having good coverage on the topic. So you have to make sure that when you're creating content, that um, it's good quality content, it's well written. It isn't uh, duplicated content that you've taken from somewhere else. Uh, and if things like that happen, you're gonna get kicked out of uh, uh, the ranking and you, you, you know, your website will happen, uh, well, that will happen to your website. So what you have to do is to make sure that you've got good quality content. And that's where these AI content generation tools come in. Uh, they actually give you the tools to be able to discover what content should you be? Uh, writing about, you know, travel industry, for example, what are the topics that you should be writing about when you're going to a certain location? Uh, perhaps you're going to um, uh, Costa Rica uh, and uh, or Belize, and uh, you need to understand, uh, you know, whether there are reefs off uh, Belize and whether you can, uh, uh, what, what's the price of airfares going in that location? If you don't understand what the comprehensiveness of a topic should be, then you're not going to build the best quality uh, piece of content. But using some of these tools, these AI content generation tools, where they have research tools, they'll be able to tell you what are the topics that you should cover. Then some of these tools also have briefing tools that lay out what headings you should have, what questions you should be asking, perhaps references to um, uh, uh, statistics and data points, which you then as a writer can adjust uh, for your brief uh, and then um, actually produce uh, the piece of content. You either write it yourself or you use the AI content generation tool to, to use it. In the whole process, however, you need humans and you need writers to be able to monitor it. Otherwise, you're going to um, have issues such as, uh, you know, is the data good? Uh, uh, are there issues with bias? Are there issues with uh, compliance? Those sorts of things. So any enterprise uh, PR professional should be making sure that everything's still good. But what happens is that by using these tools, you can speed up the whole process by doing your research, by doing your briefing, and then eventually um, improving your writing as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we are not there yet in terms of uh, being able to just say a couple of keywords and write me an article about a, a trip to Belize. That's that's not going to happen quite yet. But um, you know, a writer uh, can write a good piece of content and a better piece of content, a high quality content, by using the tools that AI content generation. Uh, 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 vendors uh, provide, but you have to have human uh, oversight at the moment. I mean, when you think about it, how hard it is to find good writers and the time that it takes, uh, you know, the amount of content production uh, that they have to go through, then this is a really big operation. I think one of the best case studies in the industry that illustrates where you still need the, you know, you still uh, shows that um, AI content generation has come a long way is uh, uh, the Associated Press. They've been doing AI since 2014, and uh, they were in a situation where they were running uh, 300 or producing 300 reports every month, uh, company reports, and the journalists were writing it. Using AI content generation, they're able to, sorry, 
300 reports every quarter, and now using AI content generation, they're, they're producing 10 times that amount, about 3,000 or so. Um, so um, what it's allowed their journalists to do is to concentrate on writing uh, pieces that are uh, higher quality and do uh, you know more work. So there's an example of, uh, I think, a story and a case study that really captured my imagination. And uh, I think it's it just shows how uh, productive uh, you can be uh, with these tools. Gotcha. And then is that part of the reason why to do AI content? Because I know some people are like, well, it seems like it might be a little cheating because I'm not really writing this anymore and I'm allowing a machine to do it for me. Or people may not may be worried about the AI takeover of the marketing industry, but is it because mostly because of Google and everything else about being more difficult, like I said before, is the reason to use AI content and to produce more quality content as well? Is that the main reasons why? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think we have this issue where there's a bigger requirement to produce higher quality content from places like Google. Um, and so to be able to do that, you have to have the tools to understand what is quality content. Well, it's including the topics that a particular um, area of expertise needs to include. And so a lot of these AI content generation tools have uh, SEO and research tools that allow you to find that information, right? And if you've got writers who, um, and it's hard to find a good writer nowadays, especially, um, there are, there are uh, uh, you know, working hard. Um, if you can give them tools to produce content, good quality content at a faster rate, um, then that's only going to be only going to mean that you're going to be able to retain them. So they're going to be a lot happier if they can focus on um, producing uh, really good content by using these tools, I think they're going to be a lot happier to be able to you know, work with a, a PR agency or, or an internal enterprise corporate team. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, con what content do you think is actually going to become popular in 2022? Are we going to see more podcasting, audio content become rising through the ranks again. We're going to see a mixture between audio and video. Like what's going to be like the breakthrough that brands are going to have to focus on? Well, um, I'm a big fan of audio and uh, video podcasting as well, but I think you can also use it in combination with, uh, with text. I mean, we can, we're here, we're making this podcast. We can also take this content and then turn it into text as well. Uh, but instead of just perhaps doing uh, straight show notes, which is good, why not turn it into a blog post? And that's the opportunity, I think, to, to use AI content generation tools where it's quickly you can spin up a, um, uh, a brief, know what headlines you're supposed to have and what questions you're supposed to have, and you can rework that content. So, um, yeah, I think, I think you're going to see more use of uh, audio and, and video, uh, but if it's used in con combination with an AI content generation tool, uh, you can make that content work even further. And that even leads to my next question. Are we gonna see less written content because of the popularity of let's say TikTok being even more visited than Google search nowadays, which is weird to me because Google is like the number one. Are we gonna see, less written content overall, or maybe more integrated into the video and audio, like you said? No, I, I, I think I think there's going to be more content, uh, not less. Um, and I think these tools allow uh, even small companies to be able to compete with larger companies as a result. Um, uh, I think it just gives more opportunity for companies to um, uh, to take the different uh, types of content, such as video or audio, and then do something else with them and turn them into to text. I mean, if I can do one thing and then make it into different types of content, that's a lot better. I mean, what if you made a series of podcasts and uh, you made it onto a topic uh, for perhaps a book? You could string those together into chapters and then make an ebook or a book out of it quite easily. You still use the podcast and uh, uh, and use that in that particular channel, but then you can reuse that content in a different setting. Gotcha. And then 
I mean, what's your opinion about the new audio stuff like Clubhouse and everything and podcasting? Do you see it as an advantage to for brands to start either being guests or starting their own Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces or whatever? Um, I think I think um, whenever you have a new channel, uh, it's worth brands trying, you know, checking it out. But I also think that. Um, uh, Brands are essentially their, they're their own media channel. You know, I remember some large financial companies that I've worked with in the past, and they um, have very, very high quality video production, very high quality audio production. And um, I think that those brands are going to continue to produce the type of content. I mean, I, I think of some of the leading real estate companies in the, in the industry who have more specialists and economists on hand to develop higher quality content than some of the leading media companies that are out there. So I, I do see that brands are gonna to continue to use uh, and generate good quality content. And I think they're gonna to continue to do it with, um, uh, with video and also audio. Mm, gotcha. And then what content do you think is gonna actually be successful for the brands this year and beyond? Well, we did talk uh, a little bit about the metaverse. I mean, I, I think you, you're seeing more uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, I think it's still a little bit of a buzz uh, content, uh, uh, issue, though. I mean, I remember um, I've worked in the past in the real estate industry and seen the use of uh, virtual reality for showing homes and so forth. And you would have thought during the pandemic that definitely uh, did get bigger, you know, but I was just checking the percentages uh, before coming onto the show. Uh, and basically I was checking some of the, uh, the real estate uh, listing sites uh, for the, you know, whether the percentages have increased, it's still a small percentage um, of the number of homes that are showing virtual reality. And I think part of that is, uh, people uh, getting used to uh, the technology and it's also, you know, do they have the headset? So I think it's all dependent upon um, how the technology is deployed at a, at a consumer level. I think it's going to increase, but uh, I think we've got a little bit way to, to go yet before uh, AR and, uh, uh, and virtual reality uh, become as, uh, as big as the hype. Well, I, I mean, for me, VR, the headsets are really expensive still. I think Facebook is finally making them cheaper, but a lot of those headsets right. are pretty expensive still. They are, and I think that's the impediment uh, to the, the, the process. But I, I do think we're going to hear a lot about that. There's going to be a lot of hype <laughs> this year. It certainly started off in January of 2022. Um, so... Um, uh, but uh, but there's a little way yet ways yet to go before um, you know the hype meets reality. Mm -hmm. And then fun question for you: If you could create a personality for AI, what would you create, or what type of personality would you create? Well, um, I was thinking if we could use those AI content generation models to go back in time, you know, we could create a personality back in history. You know, we could create somebody like uh, Charles Darwin or, or um, uh, sorry, you know, Isaac Newton or Frederick Douglass, something like that. And it'd be interesting to be able to talk to them um, and actually uh, use their language. Because we, because those folks wrote a lot of material, uh, the AI content generation tools would be able to emulate uh, those folks and uh, and actually come back with an answer. So that I think that would be uh, rather fun to, uh, to see uh, an emulation of. So basically recreate history to now so people could see like Plato, Socrates, Darwin and all those others. Exactly. That's right. Yes. That could be very interesting. It'll almost be like a Bill and Ted excellent adventure without the phone booth. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's right. That's right, Brad. All right. Any final thoughts for listeners? Well, I, I'm really excited. I mean, I remember, you know, the early days of blogging 20 years ago, and um, I, I'm, I have the same level of excitement about AI content generation for 
for writers in the PR industry and the marketing industry. And I can't wait to see over the next year what happens. Uh, I think it's only going to get better. And I think also that people are going to make, um, you know, a, a, a bigger uh, a review of how that technology is is laying out this year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, follow-up question would be, what are you excited for for the future of AI? Um. I, I think it's the development by the vendors for templates that really work for each of the uh, types of content. So, you know, you've seen companies like um, uh, Hootsuite uh, by a conversational AI uh, vendor. You've seen Unbounce. They, uh, they purchased a... Um, uh, a uh, AI content uh, generation vendor. And so what I'm interested and excited about is the, are those different companies who um, develop the best uh, templates for each of uh, uh, those different types of content, whether it be landing pages or it might be PR pitches. That's what I'm excited about. I'm, I'm excited to see how those companies um, you know, develop much more uh, uh, sophisticated and and uh, really tailored uh, solutions for AI content generation. All right. Thank you, John, for joining PR360 and sharing your knowledge on AI and content. Thank you so much, Brett. And thank you for listening to PR360. As always, please subscribe to PR360 on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. The review it really does help with the rankings. And let us know how we're doing. Enjoy us next week as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Getting to understand AI and using those AI tools to write better content. And see you next week. Later.